You probably forgive Eric Ten Hag for taking a few days off after winning the title with Ajax, securing his third Eredivisie title before he starts working for Manchester United. But absolutely not. The day after, he's meeting John Murto in Amsterdam with Steve McLaren and Mitchell van der Gag to talk through the transfer plans for Man United for this summer. No more speculation. We can talk about what Ten Hag is planning to do in stage one of his rebuild of Manchester United. We're going to run through this article from The Telegraph, from James Ducker, that's been covered by everywhere. The BBC, Simon Stone, it's his plan. We can start finally talking about it. And I want to say quickly, a big shout out to Manscaped for supporting United People's TV with this video. It's been a long time coming, but Manscaped are here on United People's TV. They've been everywhere else, but they haven't been here with the best community here on YouTube. So make sure you follow the link in the description. Watch the advert later. If we can get Manscaped to stick around, it will help the United People's TV community grow and be bigger and better. So let's get it done. Before we do start this video, if you do enjoy it by the end, make sure you subscribe. Go down there, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell as well. But let's talk about it, baby. Hey, look, as I said, you would have forgiven Eric Ten Hag for having some time off. This, this was him a few days ago, just there celebrating with the fans. Let's turn this bad boy up. Let's get this celebration nice and loud. Eric Ten Hag there in the Amsterdam Arena, or just outside the Amsterdam Arena, celebrating with the Ajax fans after Title 36 was secured for Ajax. But look, less than 24 hours later, he's there having a transfer summit with John Murto to discuss his plans. And you can see they're highlighted in green. We know where Eric Ten Hag is going after this summer now. We know that he wants two midfielders, a versatile forward and a centre half as part of a summer overhaul of Manchester United squad. And in my opinion, that's exactly what we need. If it was my dream summer, those are the positions that I would go for. A central midfielder, someone who's a ball player, a defensive midfielder, someone who's a ball winner, a centre back and a versatile forward. That's good enough for stage one. There are still so many issues. We could talk about fullback. I think we'll probably promote from within when it comes to fullback. What I'm going to do now is run through each of these positions and say probably the main candidate I, I would choose personally for each of those positions. But before I do start, as I said, big up to Manscaped for supporting United People's TV. 85% of women want men to trim downstairs. It should be 100% of men that want to trim. This video is brought to you in partnership with Manscaped to help in support United People's TV. And I tell you what, they're supporting me and my life with this bad boy, Lawn Mower 4.0. Skin safe technology, waterproof, wireless charging, and I swear to God, it's even got a light on it. Isn't that nice? But if you ever tried to Manscaped down there before that bad boy exists, it was dangerous territory. Armageddon, in fact. Impossible to avoid the Knicks. That's where the technology comes in with this. It's also got the Wee Whacker inside the, the performance package. It's got the Lawn Mower, 4.0 for downstairs. The wee whacker for upstairs. You got some boxes. You even got some ball deodorant, which I didn't actually know existed, but who knew? Like, ball deodorant's right there. And follow the link in the description, you get 20% off using the code PEOPLES. As I say, people, this is a very easy placement for me to do because I've used it and legitimately it's great. If you've ever used any products before, this is going to be better. So follow the link in the description. As I said, big up to Manscaped for supporting United People's TV. But trust me, your balls will thank you. So big up to Manscaped. As I said there, follow the link in the description, 20% off, use the code PEOPLES. But let's talk about these plans for the summer. This is what we've been waiting for. It feels like we've been waiting a long time for Eric Ten Hag, but look, he's only just clinched the title. We may have had the agreement a few weeks ago, but let's talk about it. I'm going to run through the four positions, right? And the four players that I think, in a dream world, we would sign. And if we're looking at that ball-winning midfielder, I don't personally think that you can look elsewhere apart from two many now we could speak about and we will speak about here in united people's tv we could speak about bubakar kamara or we could speak about uh, what's the name of the one from uh, napoli as well he look, he's, he's getting a lot of press these days but two many is for me the ultimate number one target if we were to take a look at his stats i mean they kind of speak for him for themselves literally the top one percentile for interceptions the top 14 percent for tackles top 12 percent for aerials one also pretty accomplished in terms of passes pass completion progressive passes now he needs to improve in the pass completion i would say when it comes to this defensive midfielder what he needs to do is ball win and ball re ball winning and ball retention are going to be the two characteristics and that's exactly why i think true many fits that i think he can improve in his overall pass completion but inside this team inside this system right there he comes in straight away 
and bolsters us and actually will probably if we're being completely honest make both of make both of our center backs better because they'll have actual genuine protection in front of them somebody who really can aggressively win the ball back and actually do what a defensive midfielder should do too many would be i think number one on my list we've needed a defensive midfielder for so long we have to do it properly. For me, Chouameni is number one on my list. And the second on my list still remains in midfield. That's central midfielder. Now, I think you all know who I'm going to talk about here. And that's Frankie de Jong. Maybe I've sort of uh, been a bit of a hypocrite. I think I've said if I was going to sign one player this summer, it would probably be Frankie de Jong. I'd be so torn between Frankie de Jong and Chouameni. I don't know who I should. I'd probably go Chouameni. I've been speaking about defensive midfielder for so long. But look, if we're speaking about Chouameni as the ball winner, right? Then someone like Frankie de Jong comes in. He's the ball progressor. Look at these. Progressive passes received. That means balls that he's received from behind himself further up the pitch. Top 5 percentile. Progressive carries top 5%. Pass completions top 8%. Oh, look. Non-penalty non expected goals. Top 7%. Very nice. It's obvious how good that partnership can be. And, and I, I honestly, I'll be honest. I think I'm in dreamland right here. I don't think I'm in dreamland. I know I'm in dreamland. I know realistically this is probably not going to happen. But in the same way that if I'm Eric Ten Hag and I'm saying, look, if we don't sign De Jong, I want somebody like De Jong. He's, he's, the, he's the blueprint. I think the same thing goes for Chua Many in terms of that ball winner, that aggressive ball winner that also has the capabilities of playing with the ball at his feet. He can do a bit of everything. And that's why I think those two together, Chouameni and De Jong, that's, just, that's the blueprint of the midfield that we have to get going forward. Maybe it will be De Jong and Kamara. Maybe it will be Kamara and Neves. I don't know who it will be, but it should be two of them. And if Eric Ten Hag gets his way in his plan, he wants to sign two of them, two midfielders. And I think it should be Chouameni and De Jong. That's my two choices anyway. Moving on to the third position, and that's the versatile forward. And I think Christopher Nkunku is probably going to be the top of that list. And Kunku is a player that you've watched him at Leipzig. Saw him in the semi-final of the Europa League, Europa League against Rangers. I've watched him against Atalanta. I've watched a few Leipzig games this season. He's a versatile forward. All we've got to do is take a look at this. These are his playing stats for his whole career. I mean, it's kind of taking the piss, really. It looks like five games at right wing. Six as centre forward. Left on the t 12 on the left wing. 26 as a supporting striker. 50 as an attacking midfielder. 69 as a central midfielder. 19 as a right mid. 23... I mean, he's literally only not played centre-back and left-back. He's played everywhere else. Literally Mr. Versatile. And if you're looking at his numbers, his numbers this season really are insane. The top 1% of non-penalty goals. He is an lethal goal scorer. Progressive passes received. He loves... He is Mr. Versatile. And again, if we were to look over here and to look at this as a team, obviously Ronaldo's not in this team. And that's one thing we've got to remember. Whoever comes in, can't be good enough as, a, as an, an elite goal scorer that he's going to be happy maybe sometimes playing second fiddle to Cristiano Ronaldo. And Kunku is somebody who could play there, yes, but at the same time, you could easily just do this. You could switch a Langer out there, you could make that Ronaldo, and you could put Nkunku on the right-hand side. You could, if you wanted to, play him alongside Ronaldo, maybe just behind him, maybe in a two up front, switch it. Maybe go to a four, I mean, you won't really do a four triple two because that's not particularly... Eric Ten Hag's system. Eric Ten Hag's system very much is a 4-2-3-1. But Nkunku can play across all front three positions, as we've seen across his career. He is Mr. Versatile. And if we're looking at a versatile striker, I'd love for you to let me, in the, let me know in the comments. Do you think there's any other strikers who are equally as versatile as Nkunku that I should be looking at more? You let me know in the comments, as you always do. But if those three names, if we're looking here and we go back to this, as I said, this is his plan. Two midfielders, a versatile forward, and a centre half. That centre half, I think it's quite easy. I don't really know how you can look elsewhere apart from Yuri and Timber. Of all that, I've I've watched plenty of Ajax now ever since we got linked to Ten Hag. The last towards the tail end of the season, I've been watching a lot of them. He stands out, and then some. Yuri and Timber is a baller. An absolute baller. If you look at his stats, they kind of support that. I mean, literally the top 2% for passes completed, top 1% for pass completion, top 1% for progressive passes, top 3% for progressive carries, top 1% for... Need I go on? He is just elite at what he does. He's not about contributing to goals. That's not his job. He is a centre-back. Lo and behold, it's not his job. 
even though he got an assist in the last game of the season for Ajax. His numbers are phenomenal. And if we're looking at stage one of the rebuild, imagine this could be our starting 11 going into next season. With Varane and Timber as our two centre-backs, Tellers and Delo as our two wingers, wing-backs, sorry, uh, wing-backs, full-backs. Speak about who you want. Hopefully they won't be. I think that's still a big issue. I personally think that we need an upgrade on Delo. I personally think we need an upgrade on Tellers. I think it'll be Shaw there instead of Tellers anyway. And I hope to see the likes of Alvaro Fernandez and hopefully Ethan Laird coming through and bolstering our options. I don't particularly think that we'll be able to sign these four players that we need two midfielders, a centre-back and a versatile forward, as well as full-backs. I think we have to promote from within with the full-backs. But look at that starting eleven there. Varane and Timber with Shaw and Delo on the wings. Let's just switch that out there because that's confusing me. It's definitely not going to be Tellers. Let's go for that. And look at that now. De Jong and Chouameni with Bruno just in front of them with Sancho on the left and Kunku up front or Ronaldo and Ilanga on the right. And then you can throw in Marcus Rashford. You can throw in Ahmed Diallo. Maybe you can throw in Fecunda Pellistri. As a stage one rebuild, that is an incredible upgrade on Manchester United's team. And we refer back to this plan. That's what it is. Eric Ten Hag is going after two midfielders, a versatile forward and a centre-back as the first stage of his rebuild at Manchester United. So therefore, we are looking in a dream world at a team like that. And if it's not a team like that, it should be. It should be those four, those four signings. There should be those four positions that we sign players in. They are the right signings we need to make. It's not about an out-and-out -out striker. We need somebody who can play across the front positions. We don't just need one midfielder. We need a ball winner and a ball progressor. They're two very different profiles of midfielders. De Jong's not a defensive midfielder, but we need De Jong. But we also need a defensive midfielder to get the most out of De Jong. Get those four done. Get them done properly. Follow Eric Ten Hag's plan. And I tell you what, United go into next season going to be good. It's going to be a good, good start. That in a dream world is what I would like to see. Chouamene, Timber, De Jong and Nkunku. I don't think it will all happen. Of course, I'm realistic. We're talking about ideal situations and plans. Let's work towards that. Let's see how close we get to it. What four players do you think that we should sign in those positions? Centre-back, a ball-winning defensive midfielder and a ball-playing defensive midfielder. Somebody who progresses it forward and a versatile forward. Who are the four players you would choose? You let me know in the comments below. As I say one more time, big up to Manscaped for supporting United People's TV. Fingers crossed they'll stick around here because if they do, the channel, the community is going to keep getting bigger and better and it's going to be an exciting time next season, hopefully with this a team like this going in for stage one. That's all part of the plan for Eric Ten Hag. Let's see if United can follow through.